Hi, this is Mary again. This is Dreamy Goat Design Studio, and this video is an exciting video because it is the first step in making our first indigo vat. This video will show how to make our first stock, and I should tell you there are many different vats, therefore there are many different stocks. We'll start simple with the one, two, three fructose vat. But let's first look to see what a good vat must have in order to succeed. Indigo is very different from the other kinds of uh, botanicals that you can pull color from. This one is most unique, so let's take a look at its peculiarities. All right, the first thing you need, of course, is the indigo itself, okay? This is natural and powdered. The second thing you need is going to be a sugar, a form of sugar. This is fructose. And the reason you need, the reason you need fructose is because it eats oxygen. Now that's not a very scientific uh, term, but that's what I'm going to use for our purposes. It eats oxygen in solution. And indigo cannot handle oxygen. It does not want to give up its blue in an oxygen-rich solution like water. Okay, so we have to have a way of taking the oxygen out and we use a sugar and in this vat, we will use fructose. Now the second requirement indigo needs besides an oxygen reduced solution is a high pH. So our solution has to be very alkaline and we will use calx or calcium hydroxide to raise the uh, pH level up to 10 or 11, depending upon the fiber we're dying. And the third requirement that oxygen, excuse me, that indigo must have is not just low oxygen, high pH, but warm water, okay? Anywhere between 90 and 110, possibly at times 120, but really no warmer than that. You never want to boil your vat, and if it's too cold, it simply won't function. So let's take a look at making the stock. Okay, the first thing we do, and by the way, all the directions with more detail will be posted as a PDF in our group. So this is kind of an overview. Okay, the first thing we do is we look to see that I have 100 grams of the indigo, 200 grams of the calcium hydroxide, 300 grams of the fructose. Now, if you are using um, the materials that I have sent to some of you in the group, you will, be, you will have in your packets 100, 200, and 300, which is what I'm going to use today. But I caution you not to use it all. I caution you to make a smaller vat because you will need along the way to rebalance your vat, which means you will need to use some more indigo as, as we use up the blue, some more calcium hydroxide as the pH lowers, and some more fructose as the oxygen is introduced back into the vat. So you might want to consider this ratio of one to two to three. 50 parts to 100 parts to 150, now that's half the vat. Or you can go, you can kind of uh, cut it in the middle, 75, 150, 225. I just don't want you to use all of your goods, all of your ingredients up front because then you'll have nothing behind it to uh, balance the vat as you go along. So the first thing we do is we have to dissolve, or not dissolve, but at least break down the indigo from powdered form to a very gritty solution. Now I'm, I'm showing you this to show you that it takes a while. You add your warm water, it's warm, it's not boiling, but it's warm water to the powdered indigo and you have to stir and stir and stir to get what is a gritty, kind of sloppy gravy. It'll never be anything but gritty, okay? So now, this is it. I've already poured it in to my glass jar. This is about the smallest for a 100, 200, 300 gram stock, okay? If you're going to make a larger one, a larger uh, indigo vat, you need a larger glass jar, or you can use a bucket or whatever, but it's nice to have the glass because you can see what's going on. So now I'm going to add, and it's still, it's still lumpy, it's not lumpy, but it's still kind of gritty in there. Now I'm going to add my fructose. So you'll notice that it's a one, two, three vat, but it's actually, when you add the ingredients, it's one, three, two. 
So I'm going to add the fructose. There's quite a lot, but I will just add it and stir it. Okay, let's stir it a bit. I don't whip it. Um, the idea is not to introduce more oxygen than you have to, and actually I am introducing more than I probably need to by just simply uh, pouring it in like this. But for the sake of our illustration, I will be rather quick to do this. Okay, so here it is, and I'm stirring, and it's getting heavy. It feels kind of heavy. I think it's more or less integrated. And now comes the weird part, the calcium hydroxide. It's very, very fine, okay? The powder is very fine. It would not hurt for you to use a mask. You don't want to inhale calcium hydroxide. It'll, it'll irritate your nasal passages and your throat. You won't like it. It's not good. And I have no idea what this J is. I think the J is from a woman who, um, who uh, uh, was in a previous workshop. So thank you. Jordan Campbell. Oh, okay, my husband knows. It was from, actually, a student of my husband's in his photo class. So hello, Jordan, wherever you are. Okay, so, now here comes, I'm not going to wear the mask, by the way, for the sake of this demo, but let's just show you what happens. It, let's keep it from, from uh, billowing up too much. I'm gonna take a little bit. I'm going to stir it, and it turns weird. It begins to cake almost immediately, and you feel kind of a crust building up. Look, already, there's your crust. And I don't know whether the camera can, catches it or not, but you can also see a fine bit of uh, the calcium hydroxide in the air. I'm gonna add a bit more. I'm going to, ooh, when I can, breathe it. Yeah, we don't want that. Um, I'm going to stir and stir and stir beyond the length of this video. You don't need to watch me just stir and stir, but you take it slowly and keep stirring, and you are very welcome, which I probably already should have done, add a little bit more warm. Remember, not hot, hot. This is, um, this is about, about 110. I'm just gonna, Add a little bit more water to make the the mixing a little bit easier and ultimately I will have it all integrated like I said it will take longer to do this then you will want to watch but you can see how gritty it is look at the lumps in here if you can catch it try to break them up but they will they're there and ultimately you will have it so that the fruit, uh, excuse me, the calx is mixed up. You'll add water to about here, and then you'll set it aside. Set it aside for about an hour, and about every 15 or 20 minutes, you'll stir the whole mixture. And then, originally, when the 1-2-3 fructose fat came out a few years ago, um, people were saying, well, you can use it right then, or you can use it overnight. I always keep my things overnight and I would use it the next day and I would get a medium range blue because that's what this particular vat gives us not the dark uh, Japanese indigo not this dark indigo it gives a nice mid-range blue I guess like this uh, good for over dyeing because it doesn't swallow up the colors underneath but <clears throat> I want to show you oh I what I was saying was that um, Kathy Hattori of Botanical Colors says that a friend of hers has kept this vat like this, like what you see now, uh, for a couple of weeks, and it actually gets much darker. So this one I made yesterday, and you can see the separation. That's what you're going for. And ideally, you're going for a flower, coppery scum, and a coppery flower on top I have the coppery scum. I don't really have the flower at all. Um, but you can see how that scum on top has kind of a copper sheen. That's desirable. Now I'm going to keep this vat. This is a day old now, and it's been 
in hot water or warm water I should say more or less most of the time I'm going to keep this around for a couple more days I think and then this will be the vat that I will use for our first um, actual dipping okay all right I will I think I've covered everything if I haven't it's in the um, PDF of instructions and we're on to our next step see you very soon